So we said that we were going to talk about scopes and scopes are a great way to limit what a user can do in your site when using a token. So when using tokens you're passing around your credentials or at least you're, pa you're passing around uh, an access token that will give anyone access to the stuff that you can do if they have the token and it hasn't expired. So that is not um, a serious uh, concern, but um, still, it is uh, a token is like cash. If you have the token, then you can spend it to authenticate yourself. So um, this is um, this is how it's done for every authentication method. I mean, at some point you, you need to send your credentials, and this is more secure because, uh, as we are about to see you can limit what someone with a token can do. So, um, scopes in, in the OAuth implementation are meant to uh, give the, the user that is granting access, uh, in this case 1707, um, give them the opportunity to decide what, what he, can, he or she can do when authenticating using a token because uh, they don't want to just um, allow anyone to do everything that they can do uh, if the token is only for the purpose of I don't know, reading the email and password uh, sorry, the email and the username uh, so, uh, so yeah, um, we, we're gonna limit the permissions of things that uh, people can do and scopes is how you do it in auth world, in Drupal world however what you do is you use the permissions and uh, we have the permissions page in in here and how you interact with the um, with the permissions is uh, using roles right a role is a bunch of permissions so what I'm gonna do is um, I think it's a um, good practice to do to create for every client a matching role so I just created a tuple dev iOS role um, so once we, we have created that we can go ahead and edit the, the client and come here and select here the, the scope so by doing this save uh, what we will do is we will grant anyone that is authenticating using this client, we're gonna give them the Drupal Dev iOS role. So that that means that even if user 1707 doesn't have that role, it will be granted it because he or she authenticated using this client and off too. So uh, just uh, for to make sure that we detected what. Uh, that we what we want. I'm gonna grant administer blocks to the Drupal iOS, the Drupal iOS role. So save permissions here. So if I send that token again, uh, I'm gonna generate a new token by sending the, the credentials. Um, and you shouldn't do this. Uh, I'm gonna show you the later um, what you should do. Uh, oh, yeah, I know what happened here. Um, whoops. This is the Chrome autocomplete that keeps messing with me. APC123. All right, sorry. I just uh, put the, the secret again. Uh, I'm going to generate a token, and now it should work. Yay. And no, copy this. And I'm going to head over here and replace this old token with the new token. So um, in here, you will see that uh, 1707 has the roles of authenticated and the uh, Drupal dev iOS roles. And of course, if we head over administer blocks, uh, this user should have access. So uh, 
as you can see, uh, we have this rule, and uh, also we have this. So uh, that's that's great. Um, so these are the rules that are automatically granted to any user authenticating using a client. Um, another way to interact with roles is by uh, having by having the um, the user use or not some roles. So uh, let me explain. I'm going to create another another role just for uh, to explain myself a little bit better. So I'm going to say moderator because that's what the example suggests. So imagine that user 1707 is um, user 1707 edit. Uh, we have him be a moderator, right? And I uh, just to show you, to uh, the iOS is not selected. So I'm going to select moderator. After I click save, and then I resend this. You will see that still we don't see that in here, and that's because uh, we need to specify when we're generating uh, in the in the in the grant when we're generating the password. We need to specify of all the roles that this user has, which ones you want this token to have access to. So when I'm authenticating with the token. The user that gets authenticated, they don't get all the roles that they that they have. They only get the authenticated or anonymous and the client, uh, the the role assigned, the role or roles assigned to the client. So that means that if your your user needs to have. Uh, any permission that is granted by any of the extra roles, like in this case moderator, they need to specify that they they want that role that belongs to them attached to the token. So how they do that is by doing scope, oops, scope, and then moderator. Um, and uh, in case you're wondering, what if I pass a, a role that is not assigned to that user, like administrator. Will that grant access uh, for administrator permissions to the to the 1707 user? Um, the answer obviously is no, but uh, you will see how uh, by sending this, it generates a token that drops administrator because it's not in the in the list of allowed roles for that user. And copy, then paste here and click send so we can debug this and see uh, all the stuff. So uh, as, as we see, we have moderator because we selected it and we don't have administrator because the user 1707 doesn't have administrator and then authenticate it because that's automatic and Drupal Dev iOS because that's granted by the client. Um, and then you can do whatever these roles allow you to do. Um, so bear in mind that when you're authenticating a user, it's not using the, the traditional permission system, uh, it's using the traditional permission system altered by uh, the capabilities of these scopes and the tokens. So that gives you a uh, very, um, very good flexibility on uh, specifying what a token can do. And uh, you should always use these tools to tailor the um, permissions to the bare minimum of what you need to do. So when I'm implementing the, the dev iOS app, I'm gonna have the, the users have their, uh, their, their roles and if if they need to do anything that's related to their roles like moderating stuff from the ios app um, and i'm gonna have 
anything that is essential that any user does or can do. Like, uh, for instance, my, my app is, uh, is required to be able to read the email and the, the username from Drupal. Um, I can create this base role that we created, uh, that we said that matches the, the client name and have any essential permission attached to that because that is going to go to any user using that client uh, to authenticate. So, uh, so yeah, if you have anything that uh, any user needs to do, you don't need to grant uh, access to or to give access to the authenticated role to, to those things because that will pollute your permission system because you, you may have different apps, right? And maybe the bare minimum that uh, iOS needs is not the same bare minimum that your React app needs and you don't want to just keep adding permissions to the authenticated user. So you separate that by roles and you make sure that every user that authenticates with iOS or with uh, the React client, etc., they have the permissions that they need. So that's, uh, I know that's uh, a lot to take on. Uh, when you start using it, it will probably make more sense. That's it for this video.